What's happening? Everybody stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay, What's the procedure? stay calm! Wait, wait, wait. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, episode 143 of the Sun Moon anime titled Conclusion, Incineroar vs. Torakat just dropped, and as the title suggests, this episode is going to have the conclusion to the battle between Torakat and Incineroar. Not only that, but we're also going to see a conclusion to the battle that ended the last episode between Lucario and Naganadil. How are the two battles going to go? Who's going to win? Well, let's find out. This episode starts where it left off with Lucario vs Naganadel, and at first Lucario is in control, getting a close combat in, and almost a dragon pulse in, when Ash for some reason goes for a sludge bomb. I've defended Ash throughout Sun and Moon from people who say that he's a dumb trainer because he's shown time and time again that he's not, but this is one of those times that you can't really excuse it. He knows that Lucario is a steel type Pokemon, he's battled with Lucario before, so it's so bizarre that he would go for a poison move here, but I guess in the grand scheme of things it doesn't really matter since Naganodil dodges the dragon pulse and hits Lucario with a close range thunderbolt which Lucario also blocks for the most part anyways. I'm just saying that these little moments feel so out of place because the rest of the battle Ash uses some great strategy. For example, when Kukui sees Naganodil's quickness, he responds by having Lucario use extreme speed. Ash is only one move that isn't a special move that can be avoided easily, so he has to use x Scissor to try to counter, and even though it doesn't work out for him here, that was still a good strategy on his and Kukui's part. Then both Pokemon use Dragon Pulse at each other, which creates a giant and when Kukui has Lucario use Close Combat, Ash counters with x Scissor, forcing Lucario to catch Naganadel if it didn't want to get hit and then Ash uses this opportunity to get a Dragon Pulse in at super close range, KOing the Lucario. Just like Kukui mentions, that's basically what he did with Incineroar last episode. So he's smart enough to use his opponent's strategy against his opponent, so that's why like when he uses something like Sludge Bomb against a Steel type, you know, just a random move at a random time, it really sticks out. But regardless, Naganodil wins and you know how people usually say that a Pokemon that never wins anything got the Torterra treatment? Kukui's Lucario got the Torterra treatment. Not only did it get destroyed by Guzzlord, it also lost here. That poor Lucario is 0-2 against Ultra Beast. Speaking of Ultra Beast, I like the fact that they've kept Naganodil's trait as a Poipo from before intact. See, in the Pokemon anime, what usually tends to happen is that any Pokemon, as they evolve, loses more and more of its cutesy characteristics as it becomes a more serious battler, and that to me has always been boring. I'm specifically thinking about Ash's Torterra since I brought it up earlier, but in the show, they made a concentrated effort to show that when it evolved into a Grotto and eventually a Torterra, how it struggled in battle, not having the speed it once did. But I think without them realizing it, it also was very indicative of how its personality changed. It used to be the leader of Ash's team as a Turtwig, but once it evolved, that role got passed on to Ash's Infernape, and it seemed like Torterra had really never recovered from that. I bring that up to say that I'm glad that even though Poipol has evolved into a Naganadel, it still has all of his characteristics like painting, spinning and dancing, and even being very close with Pikachu while shedding its more immature characteristics like randomly spraying its paint everywhere. That's an evolution done right, and I gotta give props to the writers for that. Now, the next battle starts, and uh, where do you even start with this? Do we start with a really well done stare down between Incineroar and Torakat? One that build up anticipation even for the first attack? Or should we start by talking about the fact that they were showing subtle hints of fatigue from Incineroar even from the beginning when it couldn't win out against a flame charge? There's so much to say about this battle, yet it feels like I don't really want to say much because I want to let the battle speak for itself since it's so well done. I guess we can really start from the moment where Kukui has Incineroar use bulk up because he notices that Incineroar is getting physically tired because, you know, it lost to a flame charge, so he has it use bulk up. Now, how does Ash respond? Does he try to use speed to get around it like the first time he battled Kukui? 
No, this time he uses a special attack like Fire Blast since his Torcat is so powered up since Bulk Up only boosts your physical attack and defense. It won't matter if Bulk Up is used if he uses Fire Blast and it goes through. Even though Incineroar does end up tanking the Fire Blast, that's still a great idea in Ash's part. And it's after when he sees that Fire Blast didn't work is when he goes to use the strategy of speed using flame charge and getting some solid hits on an Incineroar. Then when Torcat gets caught by Incineroar, I also like how much drama they drag out from that. They make you wait for Incineroar to do something and when they pay it off and Incineroar uses throat chop, they really show the whole attack from start to hit and it looks gnarly. Now what happens next is probably going to be the most controversial bit of the episode, right? Torcat powers up, presumably due to Blaze, cause we can see how exhausted it is, and it changes forms. See, they hinted at it two episodes ago when Lana was making those jokes about calling Torcat Blast Torcat because it's different now, but in this case when it powers up and it takes on an orange glow, that's exactly what happens. And then after it hits Incineroar with a super effective revenge, Incineroar also gets that look. Because of that, I'm more inclined to believe that Blaze was activated for both Pokemon, especially since, like I said, it's shown that both Pokemon look exhausted and are on the brink of being KO'd. Now, as to why they change colors, who knows. Maybe it's just a representation of their will and firepower. I mean, Torcat has more will and firepower and is therefore more red and intense compared to Incineroar. I don't know, who knows. Am I reaching? Maybe. But it's similar to Battle Bond. Until we can get an ability explanation for it, that's the only thing I have to go off of. The two trainers then use Inferno Overdrive and while that's clashing, they have their Pokemon go inside to attack each other, Torcat using Revenge and Incineroar using Throat Chop. After their Rasengan vs Ch I mean Throat Chop vs Revenge clash, Torcat wins. And like Lycanroc in his battle against Gladion, this basically wraps up part 1 of his story, him wanting to beat Incineroar. The final part of its story comes full circle when it evolves into an Incineroar itself, and even though it's KO'd after evolving, presumably from expending so much energy, for a Pokemon as intense as Torcat was to Incineroar, I think it feels fitting. By the way, did anyone who watched that moment, did that remind you of the stain moment from My Hero Academia? I can't be the only one. Anyways, the only issue I have with this, which isn't really that big of a deal, but it annoys me because it seems to happen so often in Pokemon, is the fake out KO. You know what I mean. After two Pokemon clash, one of them almost looks like they're gonna go down, but it doesn't, and then the other Pokemon does. I wouldn't mind it as much, but Pokemon uses this a lot. Again, it's not that big a deal, but it would have been a great subversion of expectations had they not done it that way. The standing ovation by Lily was not only a good moment but also a symbol to us the audience that the match between Ash and Kukui is basically over and Ash won. I know that the battle is still going on but now the battle isn't really between Ash and Kukui anymore. It's between Tapu Koko and Ash who appears in the battlefield, smacks away to Kukui's Pokeball and says I'm gonna take part in this battle and there's nothing you can do about it. Basically even though Kukui is gonna give Tapu Koko commands. This is going to wrap up the story between Ash and Tapu Koko, which started in the first episode of the series. I really hope that eventually we do find out what Kukui's last Pokemon is, but I could see it being like the GS Ball thing. Never shown, never mentioned again. Anyway, so that's it for the episode. So what did I think of the episode? Well, what I said in the episode review should give you a good idea. I thought this was a great episode. Well animated, well directed, well told in how the story was written. We end Torcat's story and thus the story with Ash and Kukui is over. If we just look at the 5v5 battle between the two, and I'm not counting Pikachu because it literally did nothing of consequence in his battle against Empoleon, then Ash beat Kukui fair and square. And while some people might be upset at that, remember this isn't just regular old Ash anymore. You're talking about champion Ash. So I love it. Like I said in the beginning, watch this episode. It's really, really, really good. Whoa, the next episode preview looks intense. The battle between Tapu Koko and Ash is going to continue, and it looks like both Tapu Koko and Pikachu are going to use their signature Z moves in this battle. How's Ash going to use his Z moves since he's already used it before? I don't know, I guess we'll have to wait and find out. But anyways, that's it for my Pokemon Sun and Moon episode 143 review. Thank you so much for watching. 
What did you think of this episode? Let me know in the comments. I really want to hear your thoughts. If you like this video, like, share, subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter at TheRealPDGaming. And that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.